Well, how about there, Coffee Time friends? How y'all doing? It's me, John and Mama, here on Coffee Time with John and Mama. And we're just getting ready to not cook. <laughs> Lazy Mason. Oh, that's good. Not cook, but we're going to eat. Got the salad bowl out. We're having one of our go-tos, especially in the summertime. I love this most with some fresh garden lettuce, but tonight we're using a romaine that I bought the other day. And we're gonna use some spinach that mama's drained, washed and drained. Remember, the That's the Bowls that we have on sale with, with the Tupperware go off sale tomorrow night. It's end of the month for Tupperware. We'll start a whole new sale Thursday morning. Last Wednesday of the month is always the last day of Tupperware. I'll, let's see what y'all are up to right quick. Hey, Miss Debbie Cox, how are you doing? Hello, Sierra from uh, Ohio, how are you? Hey, Miss Janet. Folks, we've got leftovers. We've got leftover chicken, uh, as we showed you the other night. When did we have that? We had that just last night, wasn't it? The chicken on the wraps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got chicken, and here's the other stuff from the wraps. And you couldn't ask for a better salad than chicken and that and this and a cucumber, leftover cucumber. And besides that, it's getting late. We were going to fix breakfast ourselves out of that, do we? And I knew. See, this is what happened. The decision was made this morning to fix breakfast. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing down here, all I'm doing is breaking up this romaine lettuce and put it in this bowl. That's it for now. I'm going to touch up here where we can see what y'all are saying. Uh, Mama said this morning she'd like to have some gravy and biscuits, but not this morning because we was rushed. Uh, we went to a doctor's appointment today, and I just want to praise the Lord. Mama got wonderful results. That was good. Uh, her doctor told her she had the heart of a 25-year-old. She just thought it was good and kind, I think. <laughs> That's what's well, a big old heart. I know that. <laughs> she said, actually, it's not. It's a perfect size. So, there was good news. Anytime the Lord bless you with good news, give him a little praise. Because he don't have to bless us, but he does so freely. Okay. That's all I'm doing, folks. It's just going to... I'm turning just the edges off this. I've had this in there about over a week, but I have it in a fridge smart, and it stayed just as fresh. Look at that. It's been over there a week and four days. And it's still... Almost two weeks. Yeah, two. Really, it has been. Spinach has two. And it's looking good. Um, but I am just breaking this up. I like to break it up because I may save this for tomorrow. Uh, now, last night I did cut it up, but I ate it all last night. That's the difference. If you're going to eat it right then, it really don't matter how you get it apart. You can cut it with a metal knife or not. But if you're going to keep it any length of time, I find that breaking it up is the way to go because you don't get uh, that bruising and you don't get that brown. And I probably, this is probably just me being silly, I just tear the ends off because Mama did. <laughs> well, I don't if know. they had specks on them or anything. Well, they got a little brown, you know, they're a little darker. There's a speck. I'm right no, there's a speck. Mama sit right there. Yeah. But uh, in psychology, we studied habits and things that we do. And one of the studies was. This woman um, took the end off her pot roast. Every time she bought a pot roast, she always cut the very end of it off, the little end, and discarded it. And they asked her why she did that, and she said she didn't know. Her mother always did it. So they asked her mother, why did you do it? And she said, I don't cut the end off my pot roast. And her daughter said, Mama. You did. Oh, when I was growing up, that's all I ever, ever remember. You always cut the end off the pot roast. And she said, well, that's because I had a little pan. And, you know, the daughter just put meaning to it that wasn't there. How many things, I wonder sometimes, what do we put meaning to? Or do you know somebody who does something and their kids do it too? Uh, you know, something's instinctual. Uh, I've got a friend uh, on Facebook, and they post pictures. She posts pictures of her husband and her kid asleep, like napping or something, and they're always in the same position. They've always got one arm up, and she'll say, 
yeah, like father, like son. And I'm like, I guess that could be genetic. Uh, but another woman in the study that they did, she um, put a dish rack, metal dish rack over her. I don't know if it's metal really, but it was, you know, it's probably back then it probably was metal. Uh, but she put it in the, their turkey in the sink on Thanksgiving, the night before Thanksgiving, and put a dish rack over it. And they asked her why she did that, and she said, all growing up, her mama had done that. Well, when they asked her mama, well, do you put it, she said, no, I did then because we had a cat in the house, and I was afraid the cat would get up on the turkey. <laughs> but that daughter had put a different meaning to it, and uh, I just think it's funny. You know how we our minds work so mama cut the end off hers and i cut the end off these always i've always done that but mama did so that's what i did so that is added the spinach now look at this big old bowl of wonderful green isn't that wonderful and i'm just going to turn it look at that mm. tell me that don't remind you of summertime i really wish I was fixing up a big old plate of uh, lettuce and onions and going to Wilted or kilted. Kilt or wilted lettuce. A lot of y'all call it wilted lettuce. We always call it kilt lettuce too with mama. Yeah. Kilt. Hey Jim, how are you? Hey Sandra. What are y'all eating tonight? You know, I'm always interested in the weather where you're at. Let me tell you about the weather where we're at. It's been a little, um, let's just say moody. Moody. <laughs> This morning, it was cold, and I mean 40s cold. It's now that we don't have Alexa, because we still don't have internet. Uh, Sad. Now that we don't have Alexa, I don't know what the temperature is of the morning without having to look it up online or something, or on my phone. I don't ever think to do that. Put that in your bowl if you don't care. It's already dirty. And uh, I'm just putting, right now, I'm cutting up a sweet pepper or two. This is raw pepper raw and it's going to be good i don't um i like the raw pepper this is just like a sweet pepper it's just a little sweet pepper i'm just cutting the tip off in the in the end and then i'm just rolling it out and getting the seeds out i'll point y'all down here um but uh, can y'all see so i didn't know what temperature it was but it was in the 40s do you remember what the vehicle said mom no i didn't even look, I'm sorry. But anyhow. I was cold, I know that. It was cold. It was even cold for me. And uh, heat was on. That's how cold it was. Yesterday it was hot. And then today, at lunchtime, something happened. And we clicked over and we're up to 68 now. 70. It's warm. I had to run the air conditioner on the way to work, on the, on the way home. Had to run the heat on the way this morning. And somebody said this was Blackberry winter. Mama, is I it? I don't know. I've lost track of the winters. It's We've had a bunch. Been one long winter to me. I think every tree and bush and plant in East Tennessee has had a winter. So if it's out there, it's had a winter. And this April has been the windiest. It's barred every day from March. It has been really windy. We had rain last night. There must have been a front come through. Did y'all have cold? Uh, I heard out in the western part of the state they had some record-breaking cold. cold. Um, and that's unusual for April that we would have record-breaking cold. But we did. So that's all I'm doing. Just piling this little sweet pepper right there. And then I'm going to cut this so we can do a bite-sized cucumber. This is just the cucumber I had last night, so all I had to do was uh, get it off of, of a Tupperware bowl. Uh, we're not, in the fridge smart in Tupperware, you're not supposed to wash it or anything before you store it. And that's good from the store, but like if you have a part of a cucumber or something like that, it's already washed and peeled, it still helps. Yeah. And I always put them in there. Something that I've started doing, and we've started doing, which was a recommendation from our business leader in Tupperware, who she's been in the business for 45 years or something. I'm not going to say a number. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to get it wrong, but many years. 
she washes her fridge smarts and puts them empty in the refrigerator. Well, that does two things. That pre-chills it, and then it's there. You know how when you have a cucumber in your hand, or you have carrots in your hand, and you think, where's that it's fridge smart? It's already in there, and it's got its place, and that way it don't get lost. And I think that's a wonderful idea. So... Uh, we keep so much junk while we can not really keep ours in there. I've kept two in there, and uh -huh. it works out good. But we keep them pretty well full. You now, this stuff, little... Huh? You keep stuff in them all the time. Yeah. This little lonely chicken tender here, we got two left, but Mom said we didn't need it. I don't think she wants me to eat chicken tenders every night. She tells me just use one. <laughs> We don't need more than one. This little chicken tender here, I did not heat chicken it. Chicken breast, it's huh? your tender. It's a breast, ain't it? No, this is a tenderloin. Oh, I don't reckon that? it's a, it's not a whole breast. It's a tenderloin. Yeah. Um, we don't reheat chicken for the rule. Just don't care for it. I like cold chicken. Uh, I like it hot when I serve it the first time, but then I'm ready to just. You know, even if I eat it for breakfast, I like fried chicken for breakfast with the uh, eggs. My mama will fix that all the time, Mom said. Uh, we have it, but I don't want to heat it. I want it set out of the refrigerator, and this has been setting out about 30 minutes. I want to bring it up to a little temperature. I don't want it ice cold, but then I don't want to heat it. Something about the flavor changes when you heat it, to me. Yeah. Mama don't care for it either. No. So I just cube that up. You can see there. Move those comments over if you don't want them. And, uh, and this is just the little bowl, and all I put in here last night was the green onion tops and the purple onions, and just diced them up. I'm going to set them right there. I'm going to move you over, cucumbers. And then right here on my little charcuterie board, I'm just going to put a few carrots. You want yours cut up, Mama? Yeah, I can't eat them that whole big things. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'll lay them on the side and just pick them up and bite them up. You won't have to cut those. I can cut them, Mama. I wouldn't have you eating whole carrots like that. <laughs> and, um, what was I saying? Charcuterie board, yeah. carrots. Here they are. Love the carrots. These little baby carrots. You know, when I told you this other night, they're sweeter from California, I think. I just love them. Okay. Now, I was bragging to you all a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'll get us some plates and we'll have a little salad. I'll get them. You can rest, Mama. Oh, rest I don't know. You got such a good report today. Like you don't need to rest. You're all ready to. Ready to hit it. Yeah. I was bragging to you all about the Ken's Badaya Onion. Dressing. Now, we're not sponsored. This is just a product review. And one of y'all said, try the honey mustard. Uh -oh. I've got it right here tonight. You can see it's never been open. We're going to try it right here for the first time. But I trust y'all enough that I didn't make any dressing or anything. I figured we would just like this so good because you said I would. So here's the food. Tilchins down. So here is the goodies. The chicken, the cucumbers, the carrots, the pepper, and then the onion, if anybody wants it, like me. Mama probably don't. And here's our beautiful greens, all mixed up with that lush greenness. And here's our wonderful Ken's dressing. We're going to give a shot. We've got some fresh grated, wonderful bag cheese right here. <laughs> we have the sharp cheddar. Now that's got to be fresh grater. It wouldn't be sticking together so much. <laughs> and we have the Italian style white cheese. So we have both of those wonderful cheeses. And I have aroma tomato here that I'm also going to cut up. I'm going to give him a good wiping off. He's been washed, of course, but he needs wiped off. Some of this oh, yes, Mama. Yes. I'll give that product review in a minute because that is delicious. Now, if you're having company, you want to cut that end off the tomato. But if you're not, it eats the same. The other end's got the little 
a stem spot in it, but it still eats. So I'm just going to cut these tomatoes up here. I'm just using this napkin and just washed it on because I don't want to cut the bar, but I don't see no need in moving all that stuff around. I'm just going to put these right in here on top because they uh, definitely, we both will eat those. I normally do the anything we're having out like this because some things, sometimes mama wants different. Sometimes she wants, uh, she'll eat some of that. Sometimes she won't. So I don't never mix it all together because I want her, to, you know, maybe she feels like eating one one time and not the other. Me, I pretty well am boring enough. I eat the same thing every time. There's not a, we don't have any boiled eggs, do we? Most of the time we keep some boiled eggs in there, but <laughs> this will be fine. Be fine right here. Let's see there that little stem end. I'm just gonna cut him out. He eats though, and there's no problem with the little stem end. He just don't look the best. Just take him out. Put him over here in our little collection. Now look at that beauty. Oh, that looks like a commercial, doesn't it? Oh, try our new salad here at John and Mama's. That'd be on our menu. Okay. I'm not going to put the cheese on top because cheese will do good in the bag, but you put it on a salad and try to use it the next day, it's different. And I'm going to scoot up here. You're too far in the background. Product review on these little jewels right here. Got me in here and hit my face. These are wonderful. <laughs> Do what? Put me in here and then hit my face. <laughs> I hit mine too, Mom. <laughs> this is dried cranberries and honey almonds. Honey roasted in small batches, fruit and nut toppings. And it's salad pizzazz. These are delicious, aren't they, Mom? Oh, yeah. Man. There's your face, Mama. Oh, Put I you right in there. Okay, I guess we better taste this. So here's the Ken's taste test. I love honey and mustard, but I like mine. She likes more, hers. More honey. So you're you're up against a I'm gonna try yours, Mama. It's pretty good for a bottle of honey, but it don't come up to mine. I think I hear a little bit of mm. What do you think? I love it. I know, Jill. <laughs> it is good. Y'all are right. Mama, what would you like? Do you want me to get you something else? Or do you want to add some honey to this? No, it's fine. I can eat that. Will it eat? Oh, yeah. It'll eat. Okay. She says it'll eat. <laughs> let, me push you. Let, me, let me raise y'all up. Push y'all back. And maybe I can show you. There. How's that? This camera angle business, it changes daily. All right, let's bless it, and then we'll fix it. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful meal. We thank you for your many blessings, dear Lord. And we just ask for each and every prayer request to be answered in your name, in your glory, in your time, and your will. Be with us. Watch over us, dear Lord. Help us through all situations. Put a hedge of protection around us, dear Lord. Lead and guide and direct us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, Mama, I probably can fix your salad without even asking a question. But I'm going to ask. So you want the greens and the tomatoes. Yeah, a little bit. No, hold on. Because I've eaten late today. You've eaten today. Late. When did you eat, Mama? That we come back. Mama's whispering tonight. Mom, that doctor said you was doing good, so. Yeah, eat good. So talk up. <laughs> I should have asked her, how, what makes Mama whisper? She was talking to me today. Had her head turned, not her. I said, Mama, do you really think I can hear it, that volume? Well. You should have been able to. <laughs> you got good young ears. Mama, my ears ain't near as young as they should be. Now, I like more green. I like a good salad. And I like some good tomato too. I'll take that ugly piece of tomato. 
He's fine, but he ain't, he ain't like the rest of the Look at that pretty piece. Okay. They're gonna chop them up anyway. Chop up the... Chop them. Chomp them. Eat them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> chomp them. Mama, here's some good tender chicken. Well, that's good. I don't Thank like... You. I don't never give mom with the outside because it's a little bit harder. That tender chicken, see like these pieces here, they're a little tender. You got enough, mom? Oh yeah, I about flipped everything out on the floor. Mama's throwing <laughs> nice. Mama, honey, if I knew you was that hungry, I'd have fed you sooner. You want any of this? Yeah, I want. You want your little carrots I cut up for yeah, you? Yeah, some cucumbers. Okay, did the cucumber bother you last night? No, it didn't bother me. All right. But it might tonight. You never know when it's. You don't have nothing to do tomorrow. So if they bother you tomorrow, you just get up tonight and clean house. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you a lot. Why waste the time? Why can't I just get up and sit up and watch television? Oh, I guess. Instead of clean house. Okay, Mama. I think she said for me not to sleep and stuff. Oh, is that <laughs> what you think? You're so funny. Do you want any of this onion? Just a tad. Oh, you are going to go onion? I'm going to go cucumber. Well, I'm going to take that for myself. And I'm going to... You want purple, green? It or? don't matter. Just dip in and get me I'm going to give you some green. Okay. And I'll give you a few purples. Okay, that's good. One purple is good? That's good. Is that enough? Uh-huh. I've got a plate full here. Look at all of that. No, you really don't have that much. No, do I do. You don't have your cheese. Fresh grated straight from the bag, folks. I know. I know some of y'all out there aren't judging. Because I don't grade cheese. Certain cheeses I do grade. I'll grade Parmesan. You've got a block of cheddar. I've there. got a block of cheddar. I buy block cheese and I grade it. Occasionally, it is better in some things, but really and truly, there's not enough difference in it for me to fool with it. Like I could grate it, and it might be better, but it, there's not enough to fool with for me. And not enough goodness. In it. Shaky, shaky, shaky. The moment these may be about done. We've, we've used this. Now. It's gone. This will be it probably. Nah. You'll, you'll have one more lunch out of it, Mama. Now, in here is some deliciousness. It's got honey roasted small batches. It's got fruit, nuts, and topping. But inside of here, the ingredients is dried cranberries, um, cranberry sugar, sunflower oil, honey roasted almonds, sugar, salt, and honey. Contains tree nuts and almonds. Whatever that means. So we'll see. Now, do do. How much, Mama? Just you want to do it. your own? Yeah, let me do it on. Yeah, do your own, Mama, because I don't want to be responsible for any sad salad <laughs> faces. You see, I'm not. I'm going to use quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. Not as much as I could. I'm gonna put mine on the side here a little bit, right? No, Mom, I'm just like the, if the, this is just like downtown. This is just like downtown. Would you like fresh ground pepper on yes, your side? Yes, sir. I would. Say when. When I guess. <laughs> they always look at me like, "Come on, man, say when." Uh -huh. We're tired of grinding because I love pepper. I'm like, until you get tired. Because I can take all the pepper you can grind. And I like fresh ground pepper. I buy pepper seeds and I buy the tri, tri peppers. Mm -hmm. tri, yeah. Or tri peppers or whatever. Tri, they call them something else. It's not just tri, it's something else. Okay, we're ready to eat, folks. Let's pull you over here. I've got to start it with you. Mama started that. That's okay, Mama. That's the reason why I blessed it. Because I knew it'd be a minute on mine. Let's pull you over here and see what you're up to. Need strawberries on that side. If I had some, I would. Uh, that would be good on oatmeal. Yes, that stuff there. This would be excellent on oatmeal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. 
be wonderful. Nothing wrong using the shredded cheese in the back. Thank you, um, Athea. I'm glad you said that because sometimes I feel guilty but not guilty enough to grade it. You know. Uh, I don't want any, Mama. You want me to get you some? Mm -mm. We have croutons over there if you want them, but they're store-bought croutons. I normally buy croutons if, I mean, I normally make croutons if I make a big salad. Mm-mm-mm. Whoever you was, but there's many of you who turned, said, if you like that, John, try Ken's Steakhouse Honey Mustard. What was Thank it, Badea Onion, that we sent me back? Sweet Badea. Sweet Badea Can you reach that door? I sure can. I got long arms and I got You got long arms. Sweet Badea. But now, I'll tell you this, Ken's right here falls into a category that we'll probably make our own honey mustard but I wouldn't it's almost it's like the the chicken tenders that we get from Tyson I wouldn't make the homemade for the difference in the flavor when this is that good because it really is that good mm -hmm. what would you say mama I mean you would put a little more honey in it is that the only thing you'd change yeah yeah I like stuff too yeah That would also be delicious with some good hot tenders. Use it for dipping sauce. Oh, I used yeah. to. I use the cheese in the bag lots of times. I don't like to grate cheese. I don't either. Catherine, I hate it. I hate grating cheese. Hello, John and Mama. Actually, I hate grating anything. I hate grating cabbage. Um, if I could run it through something or like the chopper, I don't mind at all. But used to, Mama would dad. Daddy liked my coleslaw. And Mom would say, if you want to make your coleslaw, I'm about ready. Or, you know, I'm about through. And I'd say, oh, do we have to have coleslaw? He's wanting coleslaw. I said, okay. And I'd grate it. I'd hate it. But now with the chopper, you well, we could, have coleslaw, we could have coleslaw every day. But uh, I don't like grating cheese. It gets all over the grater. It gets all over everything. Um, and to me, the bag cheese, some people don't like it because they put, um, um, what is the put on it? White flour. Flour or something. Starch. I don't know. But I like it. Mmm. Grace, it's good. Grace says she loves Ken's honey mustard. I had never tried it. I've tried a lot of honey mustards, never really found one I really like. So, that's just one of those things. Now, like Thousand Island, I will make Thousand Island every time. I've never tried Ken's Thousand Island. I might would try it. But Thousand Island is so quick and simple to make that I, I make it every time. Uh, but I may try it. This honey mustard. Honey mustard is a little more complicated to make. Thousand Island... I can make it any day well, I want it. went to one restaurant used to, I'd take me a little container of my honey mustard for my salad. <laughs> yeah. Mama keeps honey mustard in the refrigerator. They'd look at me. A lot of times, especially in the summer. Not so much in the winter. Mmm. This lettuce needed to be used, that cucumber needed to be used. We already had the chicken tender cook. It was a salad in its own making. And it just seemed like it made good sense to have a good salad. With all these fixings already ready to make. And then I want to try that Ken's too. Because I bought it last week. I bought it when I bought that lettuce and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought, i got to try that. Hey, Mama. Mm -hmm. What do you call a frog that tells jokes? Frog that tells jokes. <laughs> oh, Susan, that's funny. I guess that's correct. A frog that tells jokes. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't overthink it, Mama. Frog comedian. I'm going to give it to you, Mama, because she says a comedian. So, a comedian, that would be it. <laughs> Why you tell a frog that tells jokes? A comedian. 
John, you and Mama are having a great night. Lisa, it's a good night. It is. I try to make every day as good as we can. You know, days are precious and few, and um, it's just a good idea to keep them all in a good way. I used to have a thing that I read at work um, that told about the days. I don't know. I used to have a copy of it. I don't know if I do anymore or not. It could be right here in this book. If I still have it. But anyhow, it went into detail about Mondays. Oh, that's a hey mama. I might read that one. I don't know what I've done with my little paper, but I had it all written out. I'll find it and read it to y'all. No, oh, here it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that it? I had it right here. This is a lifetime, he says. It says a lifetime. If you were to if your lifetime were to equal 87 years. I ain't that old here. No, but if you were to live to be 87, you would have 725 months, 4,524 weeks, 31,668 days, 760,032 hours. 45,601,920,000 minutes. Oh, 2,736,115,200 seconds. So it says, make today count. Make it one of a kind. I had this on my wall for a long time. And I would read it at staff meeting sometime where I'd go over it especially if we had new people come on board. Do you realize that if you hate Mondays, as bad as people claim they do sometimes, you're hating 12 years of your life mm. right off the bat. So you get 12 years worth of Mondays. Can you imagine saying, I hate 12 years of my life. So, it says here, guess we better enjoy them. So, when you break it down to that, if there's not a lot of time. And uh, 12 years worth of hate in one day, just because it is the first day, you kind of makes you rethink it. I've got a whole drawer full of little scraps of paper of interesting things right here. Not a whole drawer, just a whole little section. So, someone sent this. Mama has not read it. No, I don't open it. What was it, Johnny Carson? I don't have any rights to Johnny Carson, by the way. Um, when he would do the visitor from the east, and Edmund Mann would say, This has been kept in a mayonnaise jar in, in the back of something on a porch. I always thought that was so funny. It says, uh, Not a joke, but a riddle. Mm -hmm. What is the last number written when you write down numbers? One through 100. Zeros. Zero. That's what the answer says right there. It's this is a recipe for orange cake. Who sent mm -hmm. this? I don't. They didn't have their name on it. Mm -mm. Recipe for orange cake. I'll read it to y'all. Never made this. Something. She says, or he says. It may have been in the letter. It says what one white box of cake mix. Mix according to the directions in the box using orange juice in place of the water. Are you looking for it? I think it's just right here. Okay. Mama's, mama's wanting to get get it to the right person. So it says, you know, white, one white box cake mix. Mix according to the directions in the box using orange juice in place of the water. Leave all others the same. Bake according to the box directions. Just before it comes out of the oven, mix one cup of orange juice, one cup of sugar in a saucepan and bring to a boil. While cake is still hot, poke with a fork and pour mixture over entire cake. 
be sure to get around edges uh, get around the edges cool and eat uh, you can put a little cool whip on top if desired desired I do want cool whip on it and I do want to make it mama let's make this cake it sounds good I've never made one like that who, who do you think sent it? I think it comes from this card. Same writing. Well, that's We're going to go with it. If it's wrong, y'all correct us. Tammy he Hearing. Might be going to call them there. No, right here. Tammy Hearing from Pleasanton, Kansas. Tammy, I love this cake. Here's an, This is a letter. I won't read this out because I don't know if she wants this read out. Oh, she says I can't. I'm just now seeing this, so let's see. She sent a card. It says, a Cheery Hello. John and Mama, hope every little thought that brings adds sunshine uh, to your days and brightness every hour in the very nicest ways. I enjoy everything you do for us. You will never know how much you have touched our lives. Your, friends, your friend, Tammy Hearing. Well, thank you, Tammy. And then the letter... She says we can read it, so I've not even read it, so here we go. It says, I hope you both truly know how many lives you touch in a very positive way. I look forward to watching you every day. I lost my mama a few years ago. Oh, Tammy, we're sorry. That's awful. Uh, and I miss her so much, so I'm so glad that you, John, are sharing your mama with me. I am, I am no professional seamstress, but I hope that mama enjoys this little... Uh, Blanket throw. That's Every, the kitten throw. Oh, well, you threw it. You showed the. Okay. Yeah, I just. The blanket throw. She's the one that made the kitten throw. It had all the little kittens on it. And it says, Ever since you showed us Mama's porch swing at Christmas, I was determined to make her this to put on her swing. I'm trying to convince my husband I need a swing in the house. Again, <laughs> thanks for sharing your lives with me. Love you both and keep doing what you are doing your friend Tammy. Well, thank you, Tammy. That is so sweet. And we'll put the kitten throw on the swing. We got three swings. Um, so we are always in the swing. We've got swings everywhere. It's wonderful to have a swing in the house. I just take the notion to get out there and sit in the winter and just sit in the swing. It makes you feel good. I love to sit on the swing and watch it snow. That's what I did a couple of Saturdays ago. I was sitting out there, swinging, enjoying a cup of coffee, and watching it pour the snow. <laughs> yeah. Sleet snow. If you can work in a swing in your house, I highly recommend it. Put one in your bedroom. <laughs> put, you know, there's there's spaces in your house that, you know, put one in the living room. It doesn't matter where you put it. Just a good old-fashioned porch swing. Make it pretty. Make it out of a, a bedstead if you, if you have a bedstead. Um, Mama wants a swing. I don't know how we'd do it, but one of those bed swings where you hang it up. We really don't have the room out there on the no, porch. No, we don't have the room. But uh, she's wanting one of those bed swings sometimes. But you can take a a twin bed and make a bench swing. Uh, it'd be neat. But uh, like we had told you before, that was going to be a screened-in porch, and we had her place for a swing. Well, when we boxed it in, he said, I guess you want to get rid of this swing. I said, absolutely not. That's the best thing about the porch. <laughs> And so we put the swing up there and we use it a lot. A lot. A lot. Uh, we use the one in the front yard a lot, but we use that one a lot. So we enjoy it. Mosquitoes don't bother you out there. It's all close. And it's, it's not too cool in the summer, though, because we didn't put a vent out there because it was going to be a porch. But um, if you open the doors up to the sunroom, it'll cool it down pretty quick. And in the winter, sometimes it's a nice refuge when somebody has the heat on too high for them. <laughs> I put a wrap around me and go out there and sit in the winter. Oh, I do too. I don't mind a bit. There's no time of the year I wouldn't sit out there, uh, at least for a few minutes. And we always put a tree out there so we can go out there and sit and it swing. It says to make a place at your home that's relaxing. And what is it, Johnny, how they word it? Well, I read like one time, and we have tried to do that here. You know how you'll maybe, maybe you've rented a cabin up in the Smokies. And uh, they've got a rocking chair on the porch, and you enjoy it, and you say... I love to go up there and sit in the rocking chair and enjoy the Smokies. Or maybe you stay in a hotel and they've got a, a nice sitting area with pillows or something. Or maybe it's outside and it's a fire pit area. 
take some extra money, save your money just like you do for that vacation, and build you a fireplace outside. You know, back in COVID, when COVID was gone, that would have been a great opportunity when you couldn't travel or go anywhere. Spend your money on vacation money on making a vacation place in your house. Um, I think our back porch could qualify as a peaceful retreat, a place to go and just be peaceful. Or uh, the front porch. I love a front porch. Love it. And uh, I'm out there. I was out there at 9 o'clock, night before last. I take Maggie out for her final yes, night. Uh, yeah, last night. And uh, I let her do what she wants to. And uh, I sit there on the porch. And when she gets ready to come in, she gets comes up on the porch. And she looks over at me and says, come on. I mean, basically, she comes and yelps. Go, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I mean, it's a nightly routine. She likes it. And I like for her to be happy. So I'm usually out there about every night. But especially if it's warm and pretty. Uh, we uh, put a ceiling fan on the front porch. Not necessarily because of the heat. But it will keep mosquitoes blown off from you. If you didn't know that, it's a good little trick. Um, it's, a, it's At my house, the back porch is literally in the woods. I mean, I can throw... Well, you can almost reach out and touch the trees from my back porch. And... Um, I didn't have any mosquitoes even in the summer because I kept the fan going when I was out there and it didn't have a screen in either but it blew all the um, mosquitoes away. If you already have an existing porch light overhead you can just have them put a fan in it. Put your light kit on it you'll still have a light. Uh, so be sure though if you ever do put a ceiling fan outside be sure you buy a weatherproof fan. Because if you don't, even if it don't get wet, your blades will all drip down. Don't do that. Make sure it's a weatherproof fan. Beautiful salad. Thank you, Rose. Well, folks, we've talked everything from swings to salads. I even read you about how many days you have to live. If you get back, it's 87. I've not seen anything written out beyond that. But that's just a little bit, you know, information there. Uh, we have four swings. Yes, Debbie. That's great. You know, They've I got one more than us. That's I know. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> I seen something about a year or two ago that I'd love to have. Some of you some of you carpenters who are handy could do this. Um at your house. They had taken I think it was four or five swings and circled them mm -hmm. and they they braced them around the top so it was like a octagon and they had a swing and then it had an opening and then a swing and then an open I guess it was four swings around a big fire pit for the family and you could everybody could sit and swing and enjoy the fire. Would that not be the most peaceful thing ever? I would love, love to have a backyard fire pit swing area. Would that not be awesome? Yeah. Now you're talking relaxation and vacation right there. I guess, you know, different people like different things on vacation. But if you just like peaceful and sitting and enjoying and enjoying nature, and you know, you can make that right where you live now. You don't have to wait to go to the Smokies. You can bring that same atmosphere, bring that peace to yourself. You want an area that makes you peaceful and calm. Bring, make you a happy area. Right. Make you a happy area, a happy place, somewhere you can enjoy. Um, we pretty well got several little areas that we enjoy here. Mama does. The sun room and the sun porch is my two favorite places. Yeah. Plenty of windows, plenty of, you can see outside. But uh, I guess of all of it, the front porch is one of my favorite and the back porch. One of the porches, either one of them is my favorite little location. In the winter, definitely the back porch. <laughs> I like them both of them, but I love the porches. Um, who else? Hey, Mama, what time does a duck wake up? <laughs> At the quack of dawn. Would that be right? Take those glasses off. <laughs> I cannot see that. 
I think she's cheating, Carrie. No, I'm not. Everybody clap for Mama. It's she's the crack of dawn. It's the crack, crack of dawn. You got it. Can you not read that? No, I cannot. It just looks like white lines. Mama, I could if I got real close. Hey, Mama. Oh, here's another. Oh, note. wait, Carrie. Sorry. They're packing them on me. Uh, that was the same one. Wow. Hey, Mama. Uh, oh, she's put it on here more than once. Thank you, Carrie. I found it. I seen it. Hey, Mama. What? Oh, Carrie. <laughs> okay, every time I see it, I ain't reading that more time. Make sure it ain't yours again. Oh, uh, love sitting around the campfire. Sally, is that not the best, cheapest, most relaxful time you can have? Just build a fire, sit around, and enjoy. I seen something else on Facebook the other day. I don't recommend it because I don't know. I ain't never done it. In my luck, I'd file right through or something. But they were sitting around a campfire, and they had these pans, and they were scooping up a little coals and put. Do y'all do that? But scooping up a little coals and putting it in the pan, setting it under their chair so it would be warm coming up on them. Have y'all ever heard of that? I'd be afraid. I'd sit there the whole time thinking I was going to file. <laughs> But I saw, I thought, I don't know what I was even watching, but that's what they were doing. They were scooping it up, and they were setting the little hot coals underneath their seat. And I'm sure that raised heat. But uh, I'd be scared, wouldn't you? I don't think I'd like it, but have you ever done that? That's a heated seat, sure enough. <laughs> I'm not recommending it, because I just don't know. But Well, this man or boy who was young worked together years and years ago. He was talking about it was cold in the winter and it's cold in the factory and stuff. Uh -huh. He said they heated bricks. Now that in I the fireplace and put it in the bed to warm the bed and stuff. Like that, that I have heard of. I have heard of putting bricks and rolling them up in a, a, a piece of cloth and putting them in your bed. Now that now he said they do as a bed warmer. That's like have you ever heard the old. Um, song or I don't know if it's a song but it's a two dog night or a three dog night back in the old days people had big old drafty castles and they would keep dogs a lot of times Pekingese and they would put them in the bed with them to keep their feet warm and the dogs would lay at the foot of the bed and the, keep their feet warm and if it was cold they would need more than one dog they might need two or three dogs so it was a three dog night so that's the origin of the three dog night story. So, uh, and I can see how that would work. It's cold as my feet gets, Maggie wouldn't stay in the bed. <laughs> You'd freeze Maggie to death, should you? <laughs> Maggie is funny. She'll curl up. Maggie's got a, I've got her bed, so it's, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she's got a bed on a bed. I've got a big old round bed. And then she's got her little snuggle bed, I call it, at the back. So she'll get in the snuggle bed and roll up, and she'll lay there. And she wants covered up. And she wants covered up with her baby blanket. And then in the middle of the night or the next morning, she's laid out, sprawled out on the big round bed because she got hot. And she wants to sprawl out. So she don't last long in the snuggle bed, but she thinks she has to have it. She's spoiled rotten. It really is the truth. Maggie is spoiled to the... She nice. brings her blankets sometimes through the house with her when she gets up. Uh, Sherry says she used her sister to keep herself warm <laughs> in the bed. My sister wouldn't keep my feet warm. She was fussing about that a while back. I've got three cats feet. sleeping on me. Does that Nancy? Does the cats keep you as warm as the dog? So it's a three, it's cat. a three cat night. Uh, Rhubarb and strawberry pie. Oh, Rebecca. Oh, my that daddy loved wonderful. those. He always had rhubarb growing. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Ida Cooley, can't mama talk? I don't know. Mama, can you talk? I just uh -uh. want to know. No. <clears throat> She's got a little bit of allergies going, but she don't talk loud. She talks, she, she's got a mumble sometime, and I get on trail time. Not really, get on to her, but I said, Mom, I can't hear you. That's getting on to me. Is it? Mm -hmm. I thought it was just reminding you I can't hear you. <laughs> um, thanks, what's our babies? Uh, thank you for those stars. Who sent those? Let's throw it back down here. 
Jeanette Cummings, thank you for the stars. Hey, Mama, why did the golfer... Oh, we know that one, Jan. Why did the golfer wear two pair of pants? Because you get a hole in one. Mama's had that one before. Yeah. Uh, I have a cat who likes to play at night oh. instead of sleep. Oh, Megan, that would be rough. Uh, Maggie sleeps. She sleeps good. What did what did you eat tonight? Uh, Sheila, we're just eating salad tonight. Fried chicken cut up on a green salad with lettuce and tomato, cucumbers, and a little bit of cheese. Peppers. Peppers. Right. And we tried out our Ken's dressing, and we loved it. Mama tolerated it better, it but good. I love it. It was good on the salad. It was good on the salad. It's not a bite full of it, she said. Uh, I don't know, Sally. John, I'm a, I don't know what you said, Sally. She just said, yes, they do. Uh, your mom is so sweet. Cindy, she is. She's wonderful. <laughs> I've been blessed beyond blessings with parents. Had two wonderful parents. Yes, Got one of them left, thank the Lord. Um. What did y'all eat tonight? Salad, salad, salad. Your mama is wonderful, Kathy. She really is. Yum, looks good. Sheila, it is good. My husband keeps my feet warm. He's uh, hot nature. Cheryl, that I can understand that because uh, I'm hot natured. Your daddy used to. Fit mine until he got sick himself and get cold, and I couldn't put my feet on any foot. <laughs> what is always in front, in front of us, but can't be seen, Diana? Diana what is always in Diana. front of us? Is it Waylick, Ilya? Diana, that just destroy your last name. I'm sorry. What is always in front of us? But can't be seen. The future? The, the wind. I don't know. There's no answer. Probably gonna... the future is in front of us. And the wind, you can't see the wind. Damn. You see the results of Have it. we got an answer? What was the dressing you used, Brenda? It's Ken's Honey Mustard. Steakhouse Honey Mustard. Y'all can take a screenshot. It's delicious. I recommend it. I love Ken's um, Sweet Vidalia Onion. It's awesome. We use this, the Ken's Sweet Vidalia Onion as much on sandwiches as we do on salads. And I use it with pizza. I like it with dipped pizza in like ranch. And But we use it a lot on sandwiches, don't we, Mama? Cold cut sandwiches. Um, you know, Subway has that and they'll have that it's a sweet onion <laughs> dressing. So, Mama loves it at Subway. Excuse me. Um, she likes it better than I do. Um, she always gets extra. And um, so that cans is close, isn't it? Yeah. It's very good. Folks, we were saying goodbye. So, we're going to say goodbye. I didn't say the answer, but I'm going to say the future. Time! Yeah. Susie Atkins, it could be time. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Hey... Okay. I can't sleep. I'm hot. I have a fan. I have a fan every day. Winter, summer, hot. Paula Johnson. Uh, yeah, I had to keep the ceiling fan going. Now in the winter, I cut it on low. In the summer, I went on high. And then I won't cover. So I want it cool where I'm breathing in my room. I like to sleep in a cool room. But then I want to be warm. I know. It's crazy. I'm as crazy as East Tennessee weather. Ken's is from a restaurant in Framingham, Massachusetts. Wow. Framingham, Massachusetts. Well, Kathleen, I'd love to eat there. Hey, Jane Smith. We just tried Vidalia Onion recently. We like it. Thanks for letting us know about it. Oh, Jane, it's wonderful. Love it. Thank you all for letting us know about the honey mustard. Um, like I said, we'll probably still make some occasion because Mama likes it with a little bit more honey flavor. I like this. I think this is wonderful. Y'all need to do a meet and greet. Linda, we will someday, hopefully. But, you know, COVID is still out there. And when you're just 
bringing that many people together, you want to make sure everybody's safe. Um, I don't like Ken's Ranch. I've never tried it. Now, I'm a Hidden Valley. I don't like Hidden Valley Bottle as much as I like uh, Wishbone in the bottle. I like it the best. But I like the powder and make my own homemade ranch. And I usually put a little Frank's hot sauce in it. Put a little bit of Cajun season spice, like the Creole. Sprinkle a little bit of it in there. So I like to mix it up a little bit. But then I, I make it. Usually when I make ranch, I make straight up ranch. Then I pour half of it out in another bottle. And I add some hot stuff to it. Because that's what I like. I like it. Mine's always, my ranch... Usually it's got a little pink to it. It's almost looks like Thousand Island because I put Frank's hot sauce and um, Creole sauce in it and some good hot stuff because I like that cold lettuce and tomato with that hot. Just I don't know. I like it. And some mandarin oranges. Yes, that cake. We're going to make that cake. Mama's, we're going to make that cake and we'll make it on here with you all. We might even turn that into a cook-along if y'all want to get you the white cake mix. It just really just white cake mix, follow the directions, and have you some orange juice on hand and you can make this cake. So uh, we might do that. Uh, we can make that cake even in the stack cooker, probably. It'd be quick and easy. Or you can make it in a, probably a number 13 so you can poke the holes. Y'all want to make that cake for the next cook-along? Y'all think about it and let us know. Folks, we're going to say goodnight. Y'all have a great night. We've talked so much about swinging and being on the porch. You won't not, sir. I'm going to go out on the front porch and sit and finish my coffee and let Maggie play the rest of the evening and watch the hummingbirds. You know, wild and exciting things like that. <laughs> well, the hummingbirds were exciting. They darted in and out like crazy. Mama, these people would think we was boring. Well, we are. <laughs> Thank you. It's peaceful, boring though. I like peace, quiet. I like I like uh, the simple things of life. I really do. Uh, so you all have a great evening. Find you something simple that you love to do and do it, and enjoy tomorrow. It's it's one of your twelve years. So if you get twelve years for Monday, you get twelve years for the rest of them. So enjoy them all. Enjoy each and everything about it, and uh, have a great night. And uh, love somebody. Mama, say good night. Good night, Mama. God bless you all. Bye bye. Bye, y'all.